Hi, I'm Dale and I'm still in the closet. Last time on Bronk Built, I built this nice little closet organizer that fits in this little knockout area of our closet. On this episode of The Closet Part Du, I'll be tackling the sidewall. Actually, I'll be doing both sidewalls as they are identical and I'm going to be finishing them out with the identical units. So I hope you will hang around and see how I did it. Did you catch what I just did there? Come on, let's go. Like most of my projects, I start by breaking down my sheet goods. If you remember from part one, in the beginning, I'm using three quarter inch maple plywood for my closet. Here I break down the sheets into what will be the sides, bottoms, and shelves. There will be two cabinets where I rip four 16 inch deep sides and one at 15 and a half inches deep, which will be a middle vertical. From the offcuts, I rip pieces at three inches, which will be used for creating a toe kick base for each unit. The offcuts are now much more manageable, so I can use my job site table saw, which makes quick work of it. To finish off my toe kick pieces of my base, I just need to do a few cross cuts to size using my table saw cross cut jig. You could use your miter saw just as easily for this. I'll leave a link for my video on how to build this cross cut jig in the comments below. It's easy to make and it is easily my most used jig. To assemble the base I'm using pocket holes. I'll be using these pocket holes to attach the toe kick pieces together as well as to attach the top piece of the base. Start the base assembly by using glue and pocket screws on the toe kick pieces. The main thing you want to be mindful here is that you want to make sure that you have all of the vertical pocket holes facing up. That's what you'll be using to attach the top of the base, which is the bottom of the cabinet. Each side of our closet will have two separate units, so I need to assemble two bases per side of closet. One small one and one larger one. Now I can cut the top of the bases to size. Because these are the bases of each cabinet, they are setting the overall footprint of each cabinet. I'm using offcuts from when I broke down my sheet goods earlier, and they're still a bit long for me to safely cross cut on my table saw, so I'm using my circular saw and ghetto track saw jig. Flip the base upside down and line up the toe kick risers. I'm setting mine up so that the back of the base has about a three quarter inch overhang, which will leave enough room for my baseboards on my wall. Left to right, I leave about a one and three quarter inch overhang on one side and about a two and three quarter inch on the other. I clamp it down and use pocket screws to attach. For the larger base unit, I follow the same steps, except I leave a three quarter inch overhang in the back and on one side. This is because the larger unit will be placed in the corner of my closet, so the three quarter inch overhang on two sides will clear the baseboards on both walls in the corner. I'm going to put a piece of half inch plywood on the bottom of the base units. I first rip a piece to the correct depth and then put it in place and mark the length it needs to be cut. I prefer to mark this way versus measuring as it helps me remove any of my dumb mistakes. The reason I'm putting the half inch plywood on the bottom is I'm placing this directly on my carpet in our closet and this will give it much more surface area over the carpet so it won't sink into the carpet nearly as much as if I didn't do this. The more this would sink into the carpet, the more space between the vaulted portion of the ceiling and the side pieces would appear. I don't want that. These units are going to be built to be pretty configurable where we can choose to have one rod for longer clothes like dresses or double rods for more hanging space. There will be shelves between the two units that will also be able to be removed and replaced with yet another rod for even more hanging space. There's also going to be a shoe rack with lots of shelves which of course we'll be able to remove if we want to and add another rod. Here I'm cutting all of the pieces that will become those mini shelves. They'll be cut to final size once the units are complete. Hi, I'm back in my closet and you can see I've got the bottoms 
put in place. They're not finished yet, but I have them in place. And what that's gonna do, is gonna give me the ability to get accurate measurements from the bottom up until where the wall starts to vault. At the same time, I'll be able to use my angle finder to get the proper angle for cutting the tops of each of the side pieces. My angle finder will not tell me what the angle is, but I don't really care as I'm simply going to use the gauge to mark the wood for cutting. It's a good idea to check the angle where each of the side pieces will be just in case the same angle is not carried through the entire ceiling vault. Now I can take the angle and transfer that to my side pieces. Again, I don't really care what the angle is, I just know that it's the angle of the vault in my closet. Once I have the angle transferred over, I can use my ghetto track saw to make the cut. I was lucky in that the same angle was kept across my entire ceiling, so I could use my first cut as a template for all of the others. One thing to remember is that the larger unit will have three verticals and the middle one is a half inch less deep. So keep that in mind and line up the template to the front of that piece as it will be off of the back wall. Once all the angles are cut, I can then measure and cut off from the bottom to make these verticals the correct height. Unlike in part one of my closet series, these shelves will be adjustable and removable. This means drilling a lot of shelf pin holes. I have this small jig from Craig, which works great to drill them evenly, but it is small, so I first make a much larger jig by first putting the pin holes in a spare piece of plywood. This plywood is about two feet long. This way, I'll be able to use this larger jig to put the shelf pin holes in the cabinet size much, much faster. The jig has a pin that you can use when you need to move the jig to the next space. Using the pin keeps you lined up perfectly. In the end, I was really glad I had took the time to build this larger jig first, as it really did make this step go much, much faster. And I know everything's going to be lined up perfectly. Putting in the shelf pins, I've made two mistakes. I don't think either of them are going to be a big deal, but I want to explain to you. Here is my rough drawing that I'm using to build my closet organizer. On the left side, you can see that I have three uprights. The outside uprights are 16 inches from front to back. The middle one is only 15 and a half. I'm going to put rabbits on the back of the outside so that I can fit a half inch sheet of plywood in for the back. That's why the middle one is only 15 and a half so that the plywood can go right behind it. The problem I had then was I was referencing the holes off of the back. Referencing straight off of my jig on the middle is no problem, but referencing straight off the back on the side one, that's a problem because it's actually a half inch further back than the, than the one on here. The reason I don't think it's going to be a problem is even though I'm going to have a rabbit coming in here about a half an inch, it's still going to give me enough room for these pins to hold on the outside piece. It's only going to be about a half an inch or so, but it still should be plenty. So I'm not too worried about it. I will take this into account though, when I do the other cabinet to make sure that I remember that there's going to be a half inch rabbit in the back. The other mistake I made, which really isn't going to be too big of a deal at all, is I started drilling the holes all the way at the bottom and I don't think I'm going to need to put a shelf that's only about a half inch from the bottom. I really should have started with probably this hole or maybe even this hole. I, there was just no reason to have those because I'm not going to have a shelf there. So for those holes, it's not really a big deal. They'll never be used, but oh well. Now for putting in the rabbits. I'm using my router for this and a half inch rabbit bit. I'm putting in a rabbit on four of the uprights. Just be very mindful and make sure your rabbits go on the correct side. Really, take your time and mark out on each vertical which side gets the rabbit. I even stood them up in my garage just as they would be installed in the closet so that I could have a visual to make sure I was doing it right. It would be pretty awful to make that mistake this far along. The next step is to attach the verticals to the base. Not too much trouble here. 
I use some corner clamps to help hold them in place. Make sure that I line up the back of the base to the rabbets in the side and screw in from the bottom. No one will be able to see these screws, so no need to do anything with them or try to hide them. For the larger unit, I needed to remove the half inch plywood from the bottom so that I'd be able to screw the middle vertical in place from underneath. Once the middle vertical is screwed in place, I simply put the half inch plywood back on the bottom. Now it's time to cut the backs. First rip one half inch plywood to the correct width to fit in between the rabbits. Then set your circular saw at the biggest angle that it can cut and cross cut the back for the first cut. The final cut will be cutting the bottom of the back piece to the correct length. Slide the back into place between the rabbits and line it up to the side pieces. Next, either screw or nail in place. At this point, I have put four coats of poly on the units using my home right sprayer. I sanded with 400 grit in between each coat. Each side of our closet will have two of these units and each side will have up to eight closet rods. I purchased this closet rod hardware off of Amazon and like I mentioned in part one of my closet series, I needed to cut each of the screws that came with the hardware so that they would not stick out the other side of the piece. No brain surgery here, just screw them on. Okay friends, don't always think we need to go the power tool route. I'm going to run both sides of this screen at real time speed to show you that a simple hacksaw can compete with a sawzall. Three, two, one, go. Make it easy on yourself. Meet a woman, get married, have a couple boys, raise them, pay for college, and then have one of them help you move the closet units in the house, up the stairs, and set them in place in your closet. Now you can put in the rods for hanging your clothes as you wish. The unit is pretty configurable on how you can hang the rods. Here's a quick look at the first unit in place. Now using all of the leftover pieces of your plywood, start cutting your shelves. A lot of shelves. I'm going to have three longer shelves that will span the two units in the middle, connecting them over our crawl space door. The other shelves are for the shoe rack section. How many do you need? That depends on how many shoes you have. The shelves are going to see a lot of use, so I make sure they get good protection. I'm using my Home Right Lazy Susan and Home Right Sprayer to put a good four coats of poly on each shelf. I do a light sanding with 400 grit in between each coat. I bought a bunch of these little shelf pins for my adjustable shelves. These are the one quarter inch pins. I simply put them in where I want a shelf and install the shelf on top. The shelves are pretty secure on these. I didn't get any shots of us moving the larger unit in place, but believe me when I say this one just barely fit around all the corners, but we got it in. The only part that is left is to install the hanging rods in the configuration that you want them. You'll notice that in our configuration, each rod holder does not have a rod, as for now, we'd rather have the shelf space. Well, here it is, and we could not be happier. Each side of the closet now has almost double the hanging space and almost double the shelving space. And the shoe rack over here holds at least 40 pairs of shoes, which is far more than we'll ever need. You can see this section, we have it set for double rod hangers because right now, We've just got shirts and pants hanging on there, but we could just as easily remove any of these bottom rods and that way we'd have full length hanging for dresses or any other kind of long attire, like maybe a long coat. You can see over these shelves, we do have space for another rod. We did the same thing over the shoe rack. That way, if we ever want to remove the shelves, we can easily add a, another rod and now have yet another place we can hang clothes. At this point, we want more space for our shoes and we prefer to keep the shelves, but that may change later and it's going to be easy to change when we need to. One thing this really did was to highlight the job that my builder did on the attic storage doors. 
these closet cabinets are plumb, which now really shines a light on how bad of a job they did hanging these doors. Kind of crazy the doors actually even work. In my next episode of my closet organization, I'm going to tackle this area here. I'm not totally sure exactly what it's going to be, but I know it's going to be some sort of chest of drawers that's going to be able to roll out so I can access these doors. So make sure you like, subscribe, and share this episode, and click the little bell so that you're notified when my next episode comes out. Until then, see ya.